Hi everybody and a warm welcome back to Maple Leaf Customs in Switzerland. I'm Andrew and on the bench today is a Hot Wheels Red Baron. It's a 1970 Redline with the expected signs of age and the paint and the helmet patina. Now this car comes with a backstory. I got this in a very big mail call box from Paul at Diecast Graveyard with absolutely no way of him knowing that this was my holy grail, a unicorn. It's the very first Hot Wheels that I remember having as a kid and it was my favorite. So settle in with a fresh hot cup of coffee and enjoy this restoration and a very special one for me. The April 4 Horseman casting is a Ford F-150 SVT Lightning and the theme is Pit Crew Vehicle. So just imagine your favorite race team, use the colors and the numbers and the sponsors and convert this into some kind of utility vehicle. There's a Mopar weekend coming up with a 68 Dodge Dart. And down the road I've got two fantasy builds that I'm working on already. There's a Big Rig Huey and a Sky Train. I'm just mixing things up so it's fun for me and for all of you, the viewers. Sure love it if you give this video a thumbs up and get all subbed up and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my Saturday uploads. You can see that one of the very fine posts is part of the inline six engine. And if you look closely, you'll see an iron cross on the radiator, as is on the helmet. I remember very well, mine had the original sharp spike on top. I'm happy that steering wheel column survived. I don't have any Spectraflame paint, but I'll show you the next best thing that I've got in my inventory. And there's the metal base. Axles are wonky and the cap style wheels need to be cleaned up or probably replaced. I use my X-Acto knife to separate the two pieces and despite the age, they come apart quite easily. I'll probably save these for a future project. Nothing goes to waste around here. And I want to carefully inventory everything during the project. Today's community shout-out goes to Jeremy Lance. I've left a link in the description so you can locate his YouTube channel and check out all of his fine customization work. Gassers, Porsches, he does it all. Make sure when you visit, you say you came by from Maple Leaf Customs. Thank you. Nostalgia is what got me started in this hobby in the first place, and this is another great childhood memory of a treasured toy. Well, my Red Baron got lost, like the rest of them, somewhere in a box from 37 different moves to 7 different countries around the world. And then I opened that mail call box and held one in my hands again. That was serendipitous. Plus, in that same box were all the supplies I could possibly need to do redline restorations. Drill bits, taps, screws, replacement redline wheels, everything. It was an extremely generous box. Thanks again, Paul, for thinking of me way over here where you know it's hard for me to source all of those supplies. That original Spectraflame was baked on there really well, but with a little bit of finesse and some wire brush attachments on my Dremel, it all came clean. Now I'm going to flitz up the metal parts with a buffing wheel. Only takes an extra couple of minutes. There was enough corrosion on this helmet especially that it certainly needed some more attention, being a prominent feature of the casting. And I repeat this process two or three times till I got the shine that I wanted. Same approach on the metal base and here on the engine. And now everything shined up and glistening the way that it should look new out of the box. I'm using Tamiya Clear Red X27 today because I don't have Spectre Flame paint, but I think you'll see that this comes out very close in the match. And the technique is the same as it's quite a thin paint. Very light layers go on in repetition, and I build it up slowly so I don't have any drips. 
Does anybody remember the Royal Guardsmen, an Ocala, Florida-based rock group best known for their 1966 hit single, Snoopy vs. the Red Baron? Knowing they were on to a good thing, they subsequently released The Return of the Red Baron, Snoopy for President, and the Christmas follow-up song, Snoopy's Christmas. That was part of my fascination with the Hot Wheels casting because they came out concurrently. It was possibly due to the popularity of Snoopy in the Peanuts cartoon and the song from the Royal Guardsmen that, in 1968, Monogram introduced a model kit of a stylized hot rod incorporating a World War I German infantry helmet and an Iron Cross motif on the radiator. In 1969, a guy named Chuck Miller built a working life-size version of the car and the Hot Wheels casting appeared in 1970. In 73, the Red Baron was released again, but this time the Spectre Flame was replaced with enamel paint, and the front wheels were changed to the newer hole through style red lines. Interestingly, the rear wheels were still cap style, and the pointed helmet spike remained. But in 1974, that spike was dulled to a small bump due to safety concerns. I think it was my mother who called them up and complained that she'd run out of band-aids for me. Did you know that some 1970 Red Barons have been found with a white interior instead of this normal black interior? These are very rare, and only a handful are known to exist. Michael Zarnock valued that in his book at an estimated $3,000 or more. But so far, no Red Barons with the white interior have been found in the original packaging. That's the real unicorn. I'm bumbling along with the reassembly, trying to get things together without engines falling out or helmets dropping off, but eventually, I figure it all out and put the tiny specialized red line screws back in. And it looks like this. Let's have a closer look. You can see my Tamiya Clear Red gives a pretty close approximation to the original Spectroflame Red, and I'm pleased with it. And with the clear coat, it gives a very nice shine together with the flitzed up engine, the helmet, and the metal base with my channel logo. My only freelance move was adding this Iron Cross decal on the red. Thank you, Paul, for all of these supplies and the casting itself. I hope you're pleased, like I am, with the transformation between the original 1970 Red Baron, play-worn, or well-loved, more accurately, to what looks like might have been new condition. Now you're going to want to follow another link in the description to find Santa Slow Dog's YouTube channel because this was a buddy build together with him and he's doing the same casting, I think also in a pure restoration form. I'm sure happy with the way mine turned out because it's such a special memory for me. And even though you see me putting it in a blister pack, I wonder if you'll allow me for purely sentimental reasons to hang on to this one. I'm not a collector, and I may end up giving it away, which is more my nature, but for now, it might just sit on my hobby desk as a great reminder of a fun childhood. Here's to you, Snoopy, and to everyone who watched my video today, leave a respectful comment below and tell me what you think of my Redline Red Baron restoration, and be sure to come on back soon, and often, it's coffee time.